So we'll talk about exponential organizations today, and uh, I'll give you the definition of what an exponentially growing organization is, and uh, hopefully give you a cheat sheet. So first question, what is this thing? First one comes is get surprised. Who was that? Who's you? That was you? Great, awesome. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, what does Moore's Law do? It shows us the exponentially growing number of transistors in computer processors, which means basically that this thing is far more powerful than all the computers in the space shuttle together. And because this is happening, not only in computers, but in some other technologies, we're up to some very, very interesting times in our lives. So, what David Rose says currently is that any company which was designed for success in the 20th century will definitely fail in the 21st century. So, think about it for a little. David Rose, by the way, is the biggest angel investor in the world. He's invested in literally hundreds of companies. So, a quick example, 3D printing. The cost of the 3D printer has gone down 400 times in seven years, from $40,000 to $100. Another example is industrial robotics. This thing over here is called Baxter. Baxter costs $22,000, and uh, compare it to a half a million dollar industrial robot. You program Baxter by moving in time, so you don't need a programmer to program it to actually move things around. And the cost has gone 23 times in five years. And uh, Baxter actually itself is being, is being replaced by a thing called pneumatic robotics. This arm itself has 98% of the functionality of the Baxter arm and costs, guess what, $100. Mm -hmm. So you can make this thing in a, in a lab, really. And uh, biotech, DNA sequencing, has gone down from $10 million in 2007 to $1,000 in 2015. Think of the time when you'll be able to actually analyze and personalize your, your genome on something like this, some wearable technology. So, the biggest trend which is going to happen right now, it is already happening, is the Internet of Things. We are going to have 50 billion devices connected to the internet by 2020. So, you know, right now it's uh, Internet of People, uh, it's going to be Internet of Things. Your car will be connected to the internet, your fridge will be connected to the internet, your home will be connected to the internet, and what are the implications? How are we going to play with all this data and when we have this connectivity? So, now, to give you an idea of what's going to happen with several businesses, I've put in some examples of businesses in the lives of our parents and actually in my life as well. This chart on your right actually shows the newspaper advertising revenue, which, as you can clearly see from 2000, from year 2000, is going one way down. On the other end, we have the Google advertising revenue, which is going up, and it's going to go up and up and up. Then, digital music, looks like this. All the revenues, remember cassette players? Mm -hmm. They're over here, they're pretty much gone. Cities are going down. And interestingly, digital music is already going down as well, pretty fast. And uh, that's the revenue of Netflix. Netflix is now a really huge company. And compare it with Blockbuster, which was the, the equivalent in Bulgaria was called Alexandra Video. I don't know if you remember, you, we were renting VHS cassettes uh, 10 years ago and DVDs. Who, who rents DVDs, right? And so Netflix has been streaming over 4 billion hours <coughs> per quarter. So that's, what, 16 billion hours of streaming video in 2013. Have you watched Car House of Cards? It's made for them. Yeah, how cool is that hierarchy space? So, uh, what we're seeing is, you know, in terms of technology, we're pretty much very, very good at scaling. And what's happening is we can scale, but we have to learn how to scale organizations. So, organizational structures in the past, they were based on the idea of scarcity, the idea of actually owning <coughs> assets. You needed your own assets, you needed your own servers, you needed to own your office building in order to build an organization. 
what's uh, happening now is that the concept of ownership is pretty much going away and uh, right now sharing is the new interesting trend. So accessing and sharing works far better in an abundant and information-based world. So that said, here's another example, Kodak. Do you know what Kodak invented in the 80s? Can right. someone guess? Still? Still. Polaroid. Polaroid, no. Digital photography. Kodak is the company who invented the digital photography. And they went bust in 2012. They were bankrupt. 140,000 people had no jobs. In the same time, um, you know, those guys were acquired by a small company called Facebook. One billion dollars, 13 employees. Think about it. So, software is eating the world. That's what Mark Andreessen said, that's probably his most famous talk. And in the future, every company, it doesn't really matter what you're going to do, in the future, every company is going to be involved in some way in software. Or hardware, which again, is being developed by software and software. So, an or exponential organization is an organization which has ten times at least 10 times the impact compared to its peers because it uses some very interesting techniques. So what I'm going to do in the next slides is I'll show you which those techniques are. I didn't discover them myself. They were founded, they were discovered by a group of people who actually work at Singularity University and uh, they worked on them for about five years. They've been developing those and researching this. So. An exponential, an exponential organization is this, MTP plus CARE plus IDEAS, and I'll show you what those things mean. So first of all, MTP means a massive transformative purpose. That's the first thing you need to have in your organization. Why would you need such a thing, and how does it look? It's a couple of words. It's a couple of words. It's words like, IDEAS was spreading. Have you heard about this one? or organizing the world's information, or open happiness. How about that? So it has to be uniquely yours. It has to be really highly aspirational. It, has, it doesn't have to be very narrow. Please don't make it technology specific, because technologies change. You know? Nobody knows how computers are going to look in, in 30 years. Maybe an implant, maybe something like this. Maybe a personal computer in your home, who knows. It has to be aimed at the hearts and minds of people, and it has to be sincere. So why would you need such a thing? Because it unites people. It gets the power to pull. By the way, a great book by a guy who runs the Lloyd's Innovation Lab. It's called The Power of Pool. And what it means is that you'll be able, if you have such purpose, you'll be able to gather brighter minds than yourself if you're the founder or a group of founders in your company. You'll be able to gather brighter minds than yourself and gather people because of this purpose. So you'll be able to attract and retain talent. People don't just work for money nowadays, they work for ideas as well. It changes the organizational focus from internal politics to external impact. So we focus on what's in front of us and we don't focus on our internal politics and whatever. And it helps us keep focused during rapid growth. If you're setting up an ex exponential organization, you'll see the examples in, in the later slides, you'll be growing really fast. So, then what does scale mean? It means those things. First of all, staff on demand. Have you heard about any of those companies? Anyone heard about TaskRabbit or Gigwalk? One. Amazing. Two. Great. So, uh, what Gigwalk does is, uh, that it's, it's basically an app. So imagine you're, you're Procter & Gamble. You're producing some kind of fast-moving consumer goods. You're distributing in every kind of supermarket in the US. So you want to check whether your shampoo or whatever you're producing is placed in the right spot in Walmart, in every Walmart. So you get basically two options. One of them is send your employees to every Walmart, which is pretty much insane. And then the other one is use an app, which is called Gigwalk, and PNG are an actual customer of theirs, and send a push notification to the people who signed up and say, hey, I'm going to give you $10 if you go to every Walmart in your area, just 
snap picture of where my shampoo is. So scaling from zero to 10,000 employees in an hour, how does that sound? Then the next one is really community and crowd. The usage of community and crowd is key today. So organizations like TEDx and Kickstarter, DUI drones, open sourcing drones, use the community and crowd for funding, for ideas, and so on. Algorithms, having your own proprietary algorithms is absolutely a must today. Whatever you're building, you may be building a lawnmower. If it's autonomous, it has an algorithm to move. So good examples, of course, Google with their PageRank algorithm. Obviously, that's how they started their business. Now they're in many, many businesses. UPS is a very interesting example. In 2013, they ran an optimization on their routing algorithm of the delivery trucks. And by this optimization of the routing of the trucks, they saved $2.5 billion. That's like 1 20th of Bulgaria's GDP. Uh, actually more, oh, sorry, I'm not good at calculations. So, leveraged assets. Um, we, we actually heard about leveraged assets earlier this morning. So, if you have access to very expensive equipment like 3D printers, like CNC machines, use them instead of building them. TechShop is a great example. Amazon Web Services, Google servers, Everything can be rented now. You don't have to buy your own equipment. You can easily rent it. Uh, TechShop is a great example. There is a company called Square, founded by Jack Dorsey. So you swipe your credit card on an iPhone, and your iPhone basically becomes the point of sale terminal. It was developed, the first, uh, the first prototypes were developed in TechShop. This thing is now a company which is worth more than a billion dollars a couple of years later. And then engagement. Digital reputation and gamification is absolutely key. You have to engage your users, you have to rank them in some way, you have to make them compete with each other. So great examples here are, of course, Kaggle is a very great example. It's a platform where data scientists, data mining scientists, compete for some prize money. So as an example, the biggest insurance company in the US, one of the biggest insurance companies in the US is a company called Allstate. And they ran uh, such such uh, a thing on Kaggle, and for I think the prize money was ten thousand dollars. They were able to boost the performance of their insurance giving algorithms, insurance calculation algorithms, by three hundred percent in a couple of days. Comparing that to the salary of actually having a number of data scientists on board who cost one hundred and fifty thousand dollars per year each. Then the other one is, of course, we have the internal attributes of an exponentially growing organization. It's called ideas. First one is interface processes. And what does interface processes mean? It means being able to interface to the outside world, to our partners. So think of Uber. Uber recently launched in Sofia. I don't know if you've uh, been on one. Who's been in Uber? Nice. So, uh, let me ask you this very simple question. What is the price to Uber for adding a new car and a new chauffeur? Guess it? Zero. If you're a taxi company, what's the price of adding a taxi to your fleet? Not zero. <laughs> so, then the next thing is dashboards. Using live streaming with statistics and with all your key metrics and results being published so that everybody can see them. Google uses this thing called OKRs, Objectives and Key Results, and uh, it's working pretty, out, pretty well for them. If they actually use it in all their investments in Google Ventures, both in the US and in Europe, I highly encourage you to read a book by uh, one of the founders of Intel, and um, it's called High Output Management. It's where those things originated, and then they were moved into Google by one of the board of directors. <coughs> then experimentation, if it works, yeah, experimentation is absolutely key. Let your employees and let yourself do experiments. If you're a person who works at Adobe, they'll give you a blank check with $1,000 to spend whatever you, on whatever you want. It doesn't have to be involved with the company in any way. And this is one of the ways in which actually products and new services are being generated. Gmail, who, which we all of us use, I'm very sure. Gmail was a side project at Google. 
in the 20% experimentation time, one point of time. Then autonomy. Has anyone heard of this company, Valve? Anyone play Counter-Strike? Yeah? Right, nice. So Valve is a very small gaming company, right? Half-Life and uh, Portal and Counter-Strike and Dota 2, those kind of things. And uh, they have, can you guess how many levels of hierarchy? Only one. One. There is the boss and then there is everybody else. Actually, Zappos, I put Zappos here. Zappos is a great example. Yesterday, they, uh, there was a big article on, on one of the news sites where they are actually offering severance packages to employees who don't like the flattening of the organizational structure. So, if you don't want, you, you know, if you really want to have a boss and like 15 levels of management, and I like that uh, Nakov said yesterday, you know, having your colleague right there, but you know, in order to talk to him, you have to pass your email through the manager, that's insanity, that's not going to work. You'll just die, your company's job. So, Zappos, multi billion dollar company, Valve, more than three billion dollars in revenue flat organization structures. People are organized peer-to-peer -peer on project basis. Social technologies are also a key thing. Using internally social technologies so you can collaborate better with your internal employees and with your contractors. A great example here is Blue Kiwi. Blue Kiwi is uh, basically a wiki engine. Think of it as Wikipedia but for internal usage. Uh, by implementing this, Atos, Atos is a very big IT consulting company, over 80,000 employees, using this social technology, they were able to remove about 25% of the email load in the whole company. So, have you heard of Slack, for example? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Slack is, is a really amazing example, even though it was hacked yesterday. Uh, so, some, th some examples of the best exponential organizations here, and some analysis. Google, for example, they have the massive transformative purpose, they have community and crowd, they have algorithms, leveraged assets, engagement, social, experimentation, dashboards, and interfaces. Uber, pretty much everything, except dashboards, I'm not really sure about that one. Tesla, anyone seen one of those? There's a couple of those in, in Sofia. So, yes, uh, think, of, think of really, what do you do if you're Toyota and you discover that your cars are running too low on the highway, so, you know, people bump on our bumpy roads. What do you have to do? You sold like 100,000 Toyotas in Bulgaria. Everybody goes back, right? I have a Citroen, I'm going back, really, I'm going back next week because my brake pedal doesn't work properly. Uh, what Tesla does is they update the cars every week by 3G motor. You want to run, you want your heart to run, your, your car to be higher, no worries. You want to cruise mode, no worries. You don't want autonomous driving, check Tesla in three months. And uh, yeah, so really, the key takeaways, I really don't want to waste your time here. I know you're all tired and you want to get your coffee, get out of here. Key takeaways are very simple. So experts will tell you how something cannot be done. Use technologies, rent, don't own assets, and everything is being turned into information. If you want to learn more, there is a website called exponentialorganizations.com. There is a diagnostic survey, and you can check out more. That said, we're hiring. <laughs> Thank you for the interesting lecture. Now it's time for our questions from the audience. Let's see if there is anybody from the audience who would like to answer, uh, to ask a question. <laughs> so. Hello. Uh, can you tell us more about Singu Warty University? Sure. Uh, well, it's a, it's a really uh, Funny place. You go there. Uh, when the year I applied, it was uh, we applied like 4,200 people for 80 places, and uh, it was actually the only year where, where we had two Bulgarians, it was me and one other guy. And uh, you get people from all over the world. Uh, we had uh, people from 38 countries in my year in 2013. 
and uh, people range from all, all, all aspects of life. So uh, a friend of mine from Singularity was the founder of Groupon in Latin America. So he basically yeah. built a Groupon clone in Latin America and sold it to Groupon for $100 million. And uh, then I had another friend who actually runs a business with Richard Branson. And uh, there were all kinds of people. There was a guy from the Netherlands who was doing the encryption for NATO. And uh, we had designers. You know, there was a lady who actually made an interactive doll. So people from all kinds of, of all aspects of life. What, what they are trying to do is uh, they're really trying to focus on using technology to solve humanity's grand challenges. You know, think of the things which, which Boyan said, said in the morning. You know, so we, we have all those great technologies. And then we have like over a billion people who don't have food. Over a billion people who don't have this thing. You know, this, this is insane. This thing costs a lot of money. And uh, I, I went to Kuwait. It, it, water costs more than gas. Really. You can fill a whole tank of glass with for 15 leva. So they focus on those things and really solving humanity's grand challenges. And uh, that's that's it really. It's like it's like a kindergarten for, for grown ups really. They give you pretty much everything you, you want and you could think of. And if you, if, they, if there is something which is missing, they they find it and give it to you. And uh, all kinds of connections so you can actually make some kind of an impact. Okay, there is a question that appeared. What are your projects right now? Uh, thanks, great question. Uh, this thing, Course Dot, is is my current project. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm here with my with my CTO, and uh, we'll be doing a launch uh, probably in a month. It's a marketplace for IT education. Um, it's a global marketplace. We already have signed up suppliers from many many countries, and probably. 30,000 people who are possible leads, so we'll be doing the lunch. The idea is very simple. If you look at IT education, it is a commodity business. You know, the technologies are the same everywhere. However, getting access to this education makes all the difference in a person's life. My personal life was really influenced by the Cisco networking academy. I know you probably have one here or, or right next door. And uh, I was enrolled in that thing when I was 13, so uh, by age 19, when I went out of high school, I had already two years of, of work experience and a couple of certifications. And since then, you know, I, I basically can't become jobless right now. You know, uh, as, soon, as soon as I say I'm looking for a job, somebody will hire me. Because I have some IT education, I have those convertible skills. So bringing access to, to many more people uh, in the cheapest and most efficient way is what we'll be doing in this, in this thing, in this marketplace. And uh, other than that, of course, I'm running IT Instructor, which is uh, basically we have 1,000 trainers globally and we ship them to different countries to deliver education. So we work with the training companies and in course the, the training companies work with us towards the customer. That's how it works. All right, thank you for the answer. If you have a question, please raise your hand so we can see. I guess we don't have any more That's questions. It. Thank you for your presentation. Let's give one more warm applause to the